Since I've been at the district, I've been working with the development community through the maintenance eligibility program for eight years, and they've become my people. And as Bao and um, Shannon talked about earlier, we're really trying to work with them to find better opportunities to really partner with them and build resilient infrastructure in our communities that will set the, the area up for development very well. And so I was really excited when First Industrial, representing the Aurora Commerce Center and Majestic Commerce Center came to us and to partner on this project. So today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about how we build bridges um, with the First Creek at 26th Avenue project. So just to set the stage, kind of show you what's going on here. In the 2010 master plan for First Creek, we recognize that there's a significant overtopping of the roadway at 26th. And you can see that the floodplain is really wide, really uncontained, the land is very flat, there really isn't a channel at all, flows split all over the place. So we knew that when this area was developed, there would be major roadway and um, channel improvement that needed to happen. And so primary goals, two of them that came out of this project, were eliminating the overtopping, and thank you, Dave, again, for, for introducing pre-storation, um, setting a, uh, the channel on a right trajectory so that when the water turns on from upstream development, that we, it'll be a more resilient system to respond to that hydrology. And with the project, we built um, 3,000 feet of channel, really defining that waterway and setting, it for, setting the stage for future development. And then two, not one, but two roadway crossings, um, the one at 26 to address that, and then an, a private interior roadway uh, called the South Access. So when Majestic and the Aurora Commerce Center came to us wanting to do this project and partner with us, we knew that we wanted a competent team that could do this technical project. And so we, we in addition to the um, Kimley Horn and Wright Water that were already helping these developments set the stage for these improvements, we brought in Icon Engineering, who then partnered with Corvus and Five Smooth Stones to inform the channel design and then we later, after conceptual design was done, brought in edge contracting because they had experience with conspan installations and um, this type of work. And they were brought in during final design and did the construction. So during design, you know, it gets complicated, right? But it doesn't get nearly as complicated as when you get to construction. So the best way I can explain this is that I could talk at team osmosis during construction. And you, the arrangement that we had to get the best value out of the developer's dollars was to have them do a lot of the work that, um, to set it up for the stream project. So we had the, the site and roadway team, and then we had the stream team. And uh, luckily, the developer um, with Aurora Commerce Center hired CEI, one of our other trusted contractors, to come in and do the enabling package. And so they came in and they did the traffic control, they put in the detour, they did the utility relocates, and they did the mass grading so that the stream team could then come in. Let me just tell you what a blessing it is to not have to deal with the utility relocates <laughs> when you're doing a big crossing structure. And so they did all of that work. And then the stream team came in after that with Edge and built the, you know, put the, the con spans in with the box culverts at 26th and the, the dual con spans at the South Axis Road and then all of the channel work the, and the fine grading associated with that. It was amazing. It was so nice to have. And then CEI came back and they took out the detour, they built the road, they established everything, and we didn't have to do any of that stuff. And frankly, that made this project very focused on the stream and made the project that much more enjoyable. So it was, it was great, and I really loved this um, arrangement. Now, the reason why I call it Team Osmosis is because I just talked about it in a very linear fashion. Development team comes in, stream team comes in, and then the development team comes back, right? It's more like, um, like a gradation, right? 
The development team comes in and as they're starting to wrap up their stuff, then there's a lot of overlap with the stream team. And then they kind of go away, the stream team does their thing, and then toward the end, they come back in and they blend back in. So it's really a ton of coordination in that overlap process. So, a lot of communication, right? The art installation that you see on your screen right here is so appropriately called Building Bridges. Now, I'll tell you, I did not stumble upon this until I was preparing this presentation, and I already had the title of my uh, presentation set, so it was just very appropriate. This is an art installation in Venice by an artist by the name of Lorenzo Quinn, and um, it was created to represent people and cultures coming together over differences. How more appropriate than public entities partnering with the development community and coming together over differences to make something amazing? And, you know, I talked about the project goals. Yes, I knew we were going to build a channel. I knew we were going to build a bridge. But for me, there was much more that I, personally, as a project manager, wanted out of this project than just that. Number one. I wanted there to be participation from everybody involved. I wanted everyone to feel like they had a seat at the table to provide their input and to be part of the process. Two, I also wanted everybody to be vested in the project and have a sense of belonging. Because that's how you get commitment out of people, to do amazing things when it feels like you're never going to get over these hurdles. And three, I wanted to foster an environment of curiosity. I had so much to learn. I was so excited. I get to sit at the table and ask developers how they do their business, to get an insight into what it's like to build a site that's just more than just the channel corridor. And so I wanted to take that curiosity and also give them an opportunity and permission to ask all the questions they ever wanted. Because if anybody knows me, I am always wanting to share my experiences, always. If anybody's interested in what I'm doing, I can't stop talking, which is you know, why I'm here today, right? Um, so that was, those were my project goals out of this. And I think we actually hit that. I think we hit that really well. Um, I feel from this project that there's such a sense of satisfaction because I didn't know it at the time. And I don't, I'm not going to say that I went into this project, so this is goal number one, two, and three. But in retrospect, I know that that's what I was doing all along. So I step back now that the project is done and I ask, what was it that was the main contributor to being able to meet my own personal project goals. And I have, there's the only thing I can pin it on is meetings. We had a lot of meetings. During design, we had 28 months of design, we had over 60 meetings. During construction, 15 months of construction, we had over 70 meetings. That three months leading up to construction from the time Edge was starting, I talked about that, you know, that gradation, right? So three months before Edge was even on site with a piece of equipment, we were meeting twice a week. We were meeting, the stream team was meeting as a design team together, and then we were also meeting with the development, trying to shuffle the deck. If you've ever, if you're a card player, you shuffle the deck, right? You shuffle it and then you bridge it. And it just felt like it was that shuffling and that bridging that we did every week that made the startup of this project um, it's like success, right? The reason why meetings, not just meetings for the sake of meeting and doing business, but the reason why that was such a success for this project, I feel, is because it built stronger relationships. It allowed us to align our vision for the project because we all are coming in with different lenses. We're all coming from different perspectives and being able to be in the same room and align those is really important to reach a common goal. It also allowed us to make decisions better and faster. You can always send an email with a question, but you know, if you send me an email, it might be a day, sometimes two, before you get an answer, right? But if we're all sitting at the table, we can ask those questions of each other and get quick answers and get to decisions very quickly. And then it also fosters an environment of creative and innovative thinking. No better way to get yourself out of a problem than creative and innovative thinking when everybody is at the table contributing to the solution. Not to say we didn't have our challenges, because we did. Check it on the time. 
Um, during de- I have two, two examples. During design, we had two developers. I mentioned that, right? We had a developer on the south and a developer on the north. And because of that, they had different objectives for the project. Those differing objectives led us to some problems of getting our easements to go to construction, which made us go back and redesign and delay the schedule and have to go back and get our permits again. Um, So that was a challenge. Another example of challenges that we encountered was during construction. Um, We'd been out on site for, Edge had been on site for a whole month. And we discovered that the soils underneath the foundations for the conspans and all the walls and the box culverts were not suitable for those types of structures. And we ended up over excavating three feet to the tune of 5,000 cubic yards, taking that material out, replacing it with rock. We had a $460,000 change order in the first month. And I got to go back to the owners and say, we missed it, don't know how, we'll figure it out, but we, we missed it. And I don't have enough contingency to cover $460,000. And even though those were really hard and difficult conversations, because of the relationship that we had built during design, because of having them at the table the entire time, they saw the entire design process They were like, not what I like to hear, but yeah, we're gonna have to do it. It's just a cost of design. It's just a cost of doing the project. We would have have encountered that cost had we discovered it during design, so yes, let's do it. I was so relieved. And then Joe Williams in our office, the construction manager on this project, told me that I should go into used car sales because I could sell anything. (laughs) So thank you, Joe. If I ever need another career, apparently I need to go into sales. So a few things in retrospect, things that I would do the same, um, and, and a few things I'd do differently. So same, I would still, as complicated as it is, I would still do a development project where they look at the best value and say, okay, my contractor can move earthwork a lot easier than yours and for, for less price, and that's using their funds better, right? So partnering with them to do all that stuff, um, and then having the stream team do their work and focus on that. I think that's a great arrangement. It is not easy, so don't think that it makes the project easier, but it does make it more rewarding because then everybody's meeting their metrics. Um, Another thing that came out of this, which thank goodness for COVID, and I will say that today, um, is that we were able to hold in-person project meetings um, during construction on site, and then we had teams meetings at the same time so that people who normally wouldn't be able to get to the site were able to be there and be present and be part of the project even all the way through construction. So to have our geotech and to be able to call in, to have CEI, when they weren't even on site, be able to participate in those meetings led us to solutions a lot faster and it again fostered that, that team environment. And then um, I would do the meeting frequency all over again. You work those numbers out, it's 40 meetings per year. Oh my God, 40 (laughs) meetings per year for like three years. And I would do it again in a heartbeat because I think that's what built the success out of this project of everybody, um, again, feeling vested and and being a part of it. A couple things I would do differently. Um, I say higher contingency and I'm I'm saying I would stick to the 10% contingency. Um, I tried to be really thoughtful of the funding um, commitments from the owners and I, tried to do a little bit of risk management, and we thought we like things that are riskiest, we'll do that, and, and then that's how we based our contingency, and then I ended up going back to ask for more money anyway, so I'll just stick with the 10 in the future. And then, you know, having the Contech engineer and the geotech engineer at the table, I miss those two partners. They were never at the table during any of our progress meetings, and um, I think in hindsight's always 2020. but in the future, if I ever do another Contech structure, I will make sure that we have them all at the table as part of this too, and maybe we would have identified that earlier. So I would be remiss if I didn't say how extremely grateful I am for every single partner that we had on this project. 
um, Icon and Edge did amazing jobs with both of these. Um, and, and frankly, they made construction easy because they worked together as partners and as compadres and just having each other's back, which helped um, make my job a lot easier, which I appreciated. And then an extreme thank you to First Industrial, who represented the Aurora Commerce Center and the Majestic Commerce Center, for trusting me and trusting us in our process and um, the, you know, just, just knowing that we had their back and that we were looking out for their interest. And so without them, I couldn't have done this project. So thank you very much.